Yo, what's up guys? Joker bringing you another video for the 3.25 Settlers of Calgar League. I was going to wait a little bit before I uploaded this video, but uh, there's kind of too many videos popping up, in my opinion, giving either wrong or just like bad advice regarding King's March. And if you follow their advice, you're going to be hindered a lot more than actually helped. So I just wanted to go ahead and throw my video out going over King's March, the progression pack, uh, progression path, what you unlock at certain ranks, what you should prioritize, stuff like that, right? So to kind of pseudo show that I know what I'm talking about, I'm pretty much done. Um, I have smelting maxed out. I have mining maxed out. I have selling maxed out and I have farming maxed out as well as I have my town almost at level 10. My other two are lower level and that's going to be part of what I'm going over is because these two, they, they just aren't as important as the others. So let's get into it. The progression in King's March is uh, gated behind two things, really, uh, gold and resources. So to get gold, what you have to do is you have to map. I found that there's like a threshold. If you get your maps to above 100% quant, then you just receive significantly more gold like if you're running maps with under a hundred percent quant in an elk and go situation you're gonna get on average four to six k gold but if you get your maps over a hundred percent quant then these maps are going to be giving you more like 12k gold and gold is really important i'd say it's north of a million gold. Uh, once you get to these higher levels, it takes an insane amount of gold to level it up. Like the last two levels of the farm, I think was like 130K on its own. Uh, and that was just for levels 10 and 11, right? Level 11, 10 was like 55K and level 11 was 80K. So it, it was a lot of gold. Uh, the next thing to level up is going to be resources, right? When you go to upgrade uh, any of your stations, they're going to say that you need the gold and the resources. The gold, I just explained, you get from mapping. The resources you get from King's March itself. So let's go over the priority system, right? The first thing that you're going to want to upgrade in King's March is your mining. You're going to want to max this out as soon as you can because of numerous reasons, but the biggest one being this one right here. Marking ore in area also grants gold equivalent to that amount of ore. Once you have mining maxed out, you're going to receive, and you're in tier 16 maps, you're going to be receiving about... 1k ore per map and you can receive multiple ore nodes in a map if you do get lucky so that's giving you on average one to two k extra gold per map this is by far the biggest and best upgrade that i've found out of the four stations that i have maxed out right this is by far the best uh, I'm just going to go in like a clockwise rotation. Up next, we have farming. Farming is okay, but realistically, there's no reason to get this higher than level eight. I believe it's level eight. That's when you unlock blue xanthium. The rest of it just gives you these. It gives you the uh, farming speed and extra crop plot. Like you don't need to get it past level eight for any reason. Up until end game, right? Because end game, you want to get these pro these resources processed as fast as you can. So that's when you'd want like the bigger yield and the better processing speed. Up next, we have the town improvements with Ralph the Recruiter. Honestly, there is no reason to get this over. I believe it's like level six, right? That's when you technically unlock everything. And level six employees are better. They're more than enough for what you need. Plus, that's 
uh, going up from level six, things start to get pretty expensive. And if you don't have that much free time to actually play, you're going to be more than fine with level six employees. I can go to a fa the farm real quick and show like the price difference. I think this has a level six, doesn't it? Uh, it doesn't. Okay. But it does have a good example. There's a level five here for 163 and there is no no actually that's a bad example because he also is multifaceted uh let me find and see uh, okay there's a little six right here 223 and a level five is 171 so 50 gold and i think it's only like a 10 percent um a 10 percent increase in productivity Farming is by my by far my weakest station right now with like employees. But still, if you take this into consideration, right, a level five farmer is 171 gold and the level six is 223. But um, when you take into consideration, I need at least 18 of these guys. That's 16. Uh, that's what? uh 18 times 50 would be hold on that's 900 gold per hour difference it's it's kind of a lot and it adds up like i was mentioning when you only on average usually get like 7k gold a map so get this to level six there's real really no reason to go any higher than that until you finish maxing out your town up next, we have the smeltery. Um, honestly, you would want to do kind of the same thing. Get this to about level eight and then just stop. I believe around level eight when it gives you the verisium. And the upgrades after that get pretty expensive. And it's mainly just giving you extra smelters and increased smelting speed after that. So it's not a requirement at all you really don't need that to be higher leveled up next we have something that is a want and not a need rune smithing does not benefit the rest of king's march at all it does give you relatively strong um enchants but the amount of currency you would have to use to get some of these higher tier enchants is insane so you can upgrade this a few times but honestly you only have to upgrade it like two times or three times uh yeah see sun ruins like you only have to upgrade it a couple of times before you're able to get relatively decent enchants so if you do plan on upgrading this i say until end game cap it out at like level three uh other than that it's a waste of resources up next, we have Tujin the Harbor Master, and this is going to be the controversial one, but you're going to want to ignore this. Um, until end game, you are not really going to want to be shipping off your resources. You get really shitty rewards unless you send an overabundance of materials, and you're going to be wanting to max out the rest of King's March before you start messing with Tujin. Um, he, he is going to be great late game. But as you can see here, this is over 150,000 materials that this One Nation is requesting. That's an insane amount. That's literal, I'm pretty sure that's literal days at lower levels of material gathering. So you're, you're putting yourself significantly behind if you're messing with a Harbor Master right now. He is the end game content of King's March. Up next, we have Rog the Disenchanter. What this does is it breaks down gear for you and it gives you dust. Honestly, you can keep this at level five. I have not had a need to push him over level five, but I do want to go ahead and give you a little tip here real quick. Let's grab a couple of items and showcase. Um, I wish... I wish I had better things to throw in here real quick. Let's go here and identify these. Uh, okay, it has a T1 mod, so it might be decent. What do we got here? T3. Most of these are going to suck. 
So the thing, uh, this bow actually should be fairly decent. And this claw, okay. And then let's go into my unique tab and let's grab some junk. The thing I want to showcase about ROG is the amount of dust that you get is an average of the tiers of modifiers on it, right? As you can see, this claw has three T, two T6s, a T5, and a T4, and it's giving me 990 dust. This is giving me 4K because it has overall not only more modifiers, but higher tier modifiers. Same thing with the bow, right? So the items that you're going to want to disenchant are going to be items that have a relatively high um, total item level. Items that you may find on the ground. Let's say you pick up a ring or you pick up a helmet and it has like double T1 attribute for some reason, but literally nothing else. That's going to be something that you can throw in here. On top of that, oh wow, did they patch this out? Hold on, let me go get another type of gear. Did they patch this out? You used to be able to disassemble. You used to be able to disassemble uniques. Did they get rid of that? Hang on, let's go disenchanting. And see, I guess they got rid of that. Or you know what it probably is? He, it's probably at a higher level. I saw some people disassembling uniques, and that's where I was getting the reference of it, but they probably had a much higher level disenchanter. So mainly just, um, just throw in gear that you won't particularly use and that has no real value on the market, and you're good. As you can see, I'm sitting on 187K Thaumaturgic Dust, and every time... I get a shipment. I just throw the materials in there because majority of it is junk, like I was mentioning. But I am at the point where I'm trying to upgrade my cities. Uh, up next, we have recombination. Honestly, don't even upgrade it. Uh, they changed how it works. You would want to put one level into it for my example video that I'm going to put it out in a day or two, or maybe today. I don't know. Depends on how much I get done today. But Recombination is seeming to be a bait. I've seen a lot of people test it and they've changed it a lot. You can no longer get multiple essence modifiers on an item. You can no longer um, get uh, double. Well, actually, I don't know if people have tried the double fractured, but people are saying that the roles have changed. I watched uh, Tuna do a bunch of recombination the other day, or it was earlier today. My days are kind of blended and he got nothing but uh, trash and his recombination station is maxed out. So don't waste anything on this at all. If anything, like I mentioned, put the one level in it. That way you have base level recombination, which isn't the best, but it is still usable. Up next, we have mapping. Do not waste resources on this at all. The amount of investment that this takes to be good is insane. If you waste currency on mappers, they're insanely expensive. I think they're the most expensive unit in the game. And you, late game, you're going to have to have multiple of these up and running. The rewards you get from mapping, one mapping are trash. You can get super lucky. I saw on Reddit that there was a guy who got like a mirror from the auto mapping. Uh, you can get super lucky, but that's the same as anything. You can get super lucky. You could drop a mirror on the beach. Like you, you can get super lucky like that. But overall, until late game, much like Tujin, don't don't put any investment. It's just going to waste your resources. And early on, you're not really going to have the materials required. It kind of shows you that it is a late game thing with the fact that the level five rank up requires Verisium and Verisium is the last material that you do unlock. And I believe that is everything. We went over mining, we went over farming, we went over recruitment. We went over smithing, runecrafting, disenchanting, selling. Yeah, that's everything. So that's pretty much my takes on upgrading King's March, like your progression, what you want to do and what you don't want to do. 
uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date with this and future content. And until next time, take care.